My name is Steve Sloan. Uh, I work at San Jose State University. I've been here for 25 years. I work in academic technology at the University Health Desk. Train chasing. Um, I've been a rail fan um, since about 1968. Uh, my father was a locomotive engineer for the Southern Pacific Railroad. And I even worked for the railroad for a short period of time and started taking pictures of trains just kind of as an offshoot of my hobby of model railroading and little trains. So I started taking pictures of trains and that ended up getting me pointed in the way of uh, becoming a photojournalist. And I worked for a couple of newspapers way back in the day as a photographer. I got into photography because I was interested in trains. And so that ended up turning into a short-lived career as a newspaper photographer. I was going to junior college and since I knew my way around cameras and I was a shy kid so I started I became a newspaper photographer at the college newspaper as a way to meet girls. I thought hey this gives me an excuse to talk to them. And uh, so I worked for a couple of newspapers, the Antioch Ledger, Manteca Bulletin and that sort of thing as a newspaper photographer and that in turn drove me to more and more of a documentary approach to my railroad photography. He's going to cut, pull onto these cars, cut the air back into them and probably pull them. I'm going to guess, and mind you it's only a guess, that he's going to go up to that crossing. So I think we probably want to move uh, It's there. interesting because when I worked for the railroad uh, I was concentrating on my photography. When I worked as a newspaper photographer, I was concentrating on the trains. So it's, I think it's always good to do something different than what you do vocationally as a hobby. Because you're doing, it, it puts you in a totally different mindset. One of the railroads that I find, have a particular interest in is the railroad called the Modesto and Empire Traction. The Modesto and Empire Traction is kind of like a throwback to the 1970s. It's an industrial switching railroad. Back in the 1970s and before, if you had a warehouse, typically you'd have a railroad spur and you would have boxcars and the boxcars would be delivered to the warehouse and you would load up and unload from boxcars and uh, then they would be shipped to distribution points. Um, it's kind of interesting, you go through the industrial park and there's train tracks everywhere. So you never know where the train's going to pop out. It's kind of like playing whack-a-mole with a SUV and a train. And you just kind of got to try to figure out where it's going to be. It's just like going fishing, you know. I just like getting away. So it doesn't really bother me that they've changed that much. But uh, it's just fun to go, go on a trip and chase trains and take lots of pictures. And it's literally often chasing trains. Well, my fascination with locomotives, I think a lot of that comes from my father being a railroader. And you know the, the classic song, um, you know, um, City of New Orleans, you know, uh, talks about your father's magic carpet made of steel. And that's the way that I viewed trains as, as a small child. It wasn't like my father ran trains, my father was the train. You know, he was huge and he was a big man. And, then he'd get in his big steel locomotive and, and pull these massive trains. So I got an interest in, in locomotives that way and also through modeling. You look at my pictures in the 80s and, and it's kind of like they step back a little bit. They're more panoramic in, in the approach. Also, I learned more about photography and um, photojournalism influenced my shooting a lot more going into the 80s. Um, didn't focus enough on railroaders themselves, and I regret that, but you can't go back and take pictures you didn't take. So, so yeah, most of my older pictures focus on locomotives. As you move forward, it's more focused on trains and scenery and locations and operations and that sort of thing.